good afternoon everyone <laughs> so uh, i think from morning you may be hearing a lot about the software world i will take you a little bit to the physical world i come from uh, the national automotive proving ground it is the largest proving ground in the country so uh, what we stand for maybe so uh, to give a just a, a snapshot we are the largest proving ground in the country uh, which is spread over 3000 acres of land close to 14 different tracks for testing all sort of vehicles various laboratory for uh, which are meant for vehicle dynamics power train uh, recently we have added autonomous uh, uh, testing as well and uh, we are the largest uh, and the only crash barrier testing facility in the country uh, the asia's longest uh, high speed test track is with us so i will just like to show a small video before i move on my slide if you can play that video so that will make the narrative little easy Welcome to Natrax, India's apex automotive proving ground spread over 2,500 acres of test area. Apart from the regular testing, Natrax has seamlessly transitioned into the next generation testing era with activities in R&D and validation in advanced driver assistance systems, ADS, and autonomous vehicles. Our expansive infrastructure features tracks designed for comprehensive ADAS and autonomous testing with the ability to replicate real driving scenarios. ADAS testing at Natrax is elevated by the availability of a complete spectrum of instrumentation. The in-vehicle instrumentation is supplied by the best in business manufacturers and our state-of-the-art steering and pedal robots provide precise control over the test vehicle, ensuring high repeatability. Instrumentation extends to a wide range of dummies replicating real-world scenarios, including pedestrians, child pedestrians, vehicles, black walls and signboards, ensuring tests are conducted under safe conditions. India is nearing the final stages of implementing ADAS testing certification. In the initial phase, Natrax will implement standards such as automatic emergency braking under AIS 162, Lane Departure Warning System, AIS 188, and Lane Keep Assist System, AIS 191, to name a few. Automatic emergency braking requires prompt recognition of objects, with the vehicle intervening to apply brakes before any potential incidents. In Lane Departure Warning Tests, the vehicle under test recognizes objects and alerts the driver visually and audibly. Lane Keep Assist builds on Lane Departure Warning, ensuring the vehicle corrects its course while considering speed and variations in lane markings. The blind spot detection test assesses the sensing device's ability to detect objects of varying sizes around the vehicle, providing visual and audio prompts to the driver in critical situations, such as blind curves. Natrax stands as India's exclusive facility capable of conducting all ADS and autonomous tests under the safest conditions, ensuring 100% repeatability. Natrax aspires to become the premier testing agency nationwide, offering facilities on par with or surpassing global counterparts. Our commitment lies in continual expansion, replicating an extensive array of physical scenarios and leading the charge in ADAS and autonomous testing on Indian and global scale. Okay, so that was a brief glimpse of Natrax. Uh, now, today, from my talk, I am not going to talk a lot on software because that is not our core competency. We are talking mostly on the evolution of regulatory aspect and how, what are things missing and what are the challenges and what should be the way forward uh, when it comes to working together. So uh, very briefly, I would like to run through slides. These are not something which uh, is new to few of you, uh, but I'm just trying to give a perspective. Uh, this is just a working procedure of autonomous vehicles. This is uh, not something uh, which needs to be dwelt into much. Now, when it comes to classification of uh, ADAS technologies, there are various ways people classify. I thought this is uh, one of the most uh, interesting one from our perspective, that uh, how do I classify based on uh, 
let's say the modes uh, whether it comes to collision warning colli uh, collision intervention driver control assistance parking assistance other driving assistance and active safety system this is as of date obviously this is an evolving technology means that the modes will keep on evolving and uh, uh, i still have kept the active safety system because uh, though they were uh, when they were evolving they were never considered from an adas perspective i have worked in this area long back uh, uh, when i was doing my research and at that time uh, adas was not even on the horizon so uh, eventually now it is getting embedded into uh, uh, adas uh, terminology so it is important that uh, uh, these active safety systems are kept in this list as well now going forward there are other ways of classification how the various technologies have evolved i won't uh, take much time because i know uh, we are already running late i say various level of uh, uh, intervention now uh, there is a bit of a you know dichotomy how do we uh, classify various levels and uh, uh, even though these are for technical reasons and there are no legal foundation that some uh, sort of uh, features you you keep as level 0 and not level 1 so uh, in i say classical definition we call as zero as no automation whereas in many ways when we bring in certain features they are still called as adas features and is still considered as level 0 okay so uh, the the green the blue and the green ones are the one which just shows that where uh, human are the one who are uh, basically in driving con uh, who are the the major influencer where the green ones are the one where the vehicle system takes uh, intervenes in a, in a significant way now uh, when it comes to india uh, what are the uh, regulatory stuff which which we are still in the draft phase but uh, as i said level 0 what features we talk in uh, uh, in level 0 uh, blind spot uh, monitoring lane departure warning uh, forward collision warning uh, traffic sign recognition now these are adas features you may say that uh, you know this should not be level 0 but Uh, in it in in terms of autonomy they are still level 0 many consider uh, abs also as level 0 uh, you know i per kept in level 1 because there is still significant level of intervention when it comes to driving assistance okay now when it comes to indian regulation lot of these regulations are still in draft stage and not really released uh, and there are challenges in releasing it so uh, there is a slowness in Uh, in uh, re release of or uh, ap application of the or implementation of this regulation which we uh, openly acknowledge uh, now it comes to level 1 of intervention adaptive cruise control automated emergency braking lane keep assist uh, semi automated parking or acc with uh, uh, stop and go now again uh, various regulations are getting drafted especially for uh, abs uh, both for commercial vehicle as, as well as small vehicle uh, as well as for alks these are still in the draft phase and there is a continuous push from industry to not uh, uh, for enforce it because there are challenges and these challenges are not uh, hidden challenges these are well known challenges that indian driving conditions are very peculiar and it is not easy to apply the same formula which have been applied in elsewhere so uh, now we are only talking in terms of standards for level 1 in india when it comes to other level even though you may find vehicles in india which are offering uh, let's say level 2 features or 2 plus features in some cases but when it comes to regulatory aspect there is nothing in the road map as of now for level 2 so we should just be mindful of that fact that at present we are only talking about level 1 now uh, you know again level 2 level 3 level 4 uh, and you know in between you have level 2.5 maybe 3.5 but uh, there is still a long way to go I, in my presentation i am not going uh, to do lot of projection only till 2030 because that is a uh, a, a more foreseeable future rather than talking something about 2040 or 2045 now when it comes to the global standard lot of regulations have come again you can see that i have tried to list them in terms of level most of them are in level 0 and level 1 uh, and uh, few of them broadly gives a guideline of level 2 3 and 4 uh, now uh, in unec also we have 
zero and one most of the time uh, the uh, various regulation are uh, you know constrained around that even though there are working drafts getting prepared for level two as well and level uh, three as well now uh, since uh, this is uh, euro and cap slide the purpose i put it here very recently we have our own bharat and cap launch the thing which we have not done the over there is the intervention of the active safety system and that is something which euro and cap already has taken uh, uh, into account which we still haven't done and that was uh, at least from my personal level it was a uh, sort of a uh, little regressive step that uh, when we already delayed it why we didn't uh, went full fledged and uh, applied it but maybe in india always we try to be little on a conservative side so uh, in euro and cap you have various level of uh, adas features which are now getting applied and tested be it comes to driver monitoring pothole test or adaptive cruise control which are still not there in our bharat and cap maybe it may evolve uh, in coming years but uh, uh, at present they don't exist and there is no standard timeline this is a very busy slide i will not uh, go into the detail of it but it just gives you a sort of a glimpse of how various levels of technologies or features have evolved and i'm here i'm only showing up to level 3 and what are the various initiatives taken by few countries most of the initiative shown in the uh, bottom half of the slide is coming from us which is shown in the red color then we are uh, talking about japanese uh, various uh, initiatives which are in green color european one in the blue color and then chinese in the black color so you can see that these are the major four countries where lot of initiatives have taken place in terms of bringing the overall autonomy of, uh, into vehicle uh, going forward what are the challenges now here maybe you know it becomes little interesting again it is a heavy text but i would like to briefly talk in terms of what are the challenges which are not really Uh, allowing adas uh, technologies or uh, the regulations to be enforced the adaptation level as we see we are talking mostly in level 0 and level 1 in india uh, now uh, in terms of challenges first is the cost constraint it is primarily now only meant for the uh, high end vehicles premium class vehicles but to uh, get it to every vehicle uh it become it will certainly become a challenge because the cost uh, consideration in a cost sensitive market like india is uh, not going to be an easy challenge to solve testing and development now that is again a big challenge that we have very limited testing of autonomous vehicles conducted for indian scenarios and and we are testing as a test agency we are testing the autonomous features and and the results are not very encouraging i would not like to reveal the data because otherwise lot of customers may get hurt here but uh, uh, the current state of technology is not matured enough and we know very frequent failures <laughs> on on our tracks okay so th that is a practical challenge which i am telling uh, now uh, there are other challenges in terms of our road condition which is well known fact even though now we are boasting that we have uh, the highest uh, rate of road network in india in terms of growth uh, we have lot of express ways coming up but when it comes to national highways we are still uh, any state highways as well as road indian roads we are sitting in a bangalore i lived here for 9 years and i know how difficult it is to move in this city but uh, now i am moved to indore now i will tell i will just give you a perspective here the traffic was slow and i was often getting stuck in the jam but i was not seeing lot of accidents because i was not traveling in national highways now i am daily traveling 100 kilometers in national highway and i am seeing three accidents in a week and you can see how many fatalities they may have and there is a big accidents where the lorry gets turned you know it crosses the medium the vehicle topples vehicle uh, you know gets burnt and i just a month back i saw five vehicles uh, caught fire three people were charged to death uh, ambulances arrived one and a half hours late fire brigade even didn't turn up after one and a half hours so i mean these are practical challenges which we have in indian driving situation the the lack of standardization in everything we have is again a big challenge which is not easy to solve 
but yes, even despite all these challenges, we have emerging interest because automotive market is a significant uh, market in India. It, uh, overall GDP, it contributes 7 percent. In manufacturing GDP, it contributes 35 percent. It means it is one of the most aspirational uh, segment uh, uh, where everybody's focus is and government focus is as well. And uh, uh, with that, a lot of global players' presence in India uh, gives us, a, provides an opportunity that customized solution, and I use the word customized, customized solution can be developed for India. And that is where, you know, uh, the focus should be rather than trying to force fit the solutions which are developed for other places in, for Indian condition. Now, just a uh, uh, brief perspective of uh, autonomous component or uh, as market in India. At present, it is still is a very small market in terms of USD, uh, but uh, uh, the forecast for six, seven years down the line is pretty high. You can see that, uh, and this is just a sales number uh, in terms of various, uh, and four or five vehicles are mostly dominating the uh, market, which has some or other level of ADAS feature, whether it is level zero or level one. Okay, and uh, but uh, these uh, these are still I would call not a very uh, sort of a helpful feature. These I still call a fancy feature. Why I say that? I was sitting uh, on the back of uh, uh, of a electric vehicle where the collision warning system was there, and I saw how the driver was reacting to that warning system. So lack of education and awareness is also one thing. He was not even bothered what that warning system is doing because they have a habit of driving bumper to bumper, doing very close corner. So even if it beeps 10 times in a uh, minute that, you know, uh, f forcible crash or uh, you avoid uh, uh, aggressive driving, the driver don't pay any attention to that. It is just a, you know, piece of crap which that software bugs to him. So the driver don't pay any attention to that. So that, that is a ground reality which our, you know, people uh, in India, so obviously I'm not saying everybody is of that type, but a major population will still is not mentally ready to accept that because they know Indian driving conditions are challenging. But yes, in express ways, maybe we still have a good chance that these features may see some sort of a practical implementation and, and may eventually help us in uh, reducing the accidents. So uh, now uh, looking into the international market, I will not spend much time. Uh, the projections are very high for uh, worldwide uh, for next 10 years. Now when it comes to uh, level-wise segregation, you can see that uh, at least for next, uh, for 2030, the level one, level two are still going to have the maximum market, maybe up to level two plus if you also consider that, that is going to have the bulk of the market worldwide. <coughs> And then maybe a little bit of level three and level four may is also projected worldwide uh, uh, in terms of these are number of units of vehicles which are going to be in market for, uh, by 2020, uh, 2030. And you can see that uh, most of them will be crowded with level zero and level one. Now, two major markets, uh, US and China, how they share when it comes to uh, uh, you know various levels. So you can see that bulk of them are in offering level two, 47% for US and 53% for China. And then uh, level one and level zero are also uh, having significant portion. So that gives you a perspective where we are. Uh, and then uh, for other countries, we have similar distribution in terms of the presence of various uh, stuff. Now coming towards uh, last part of my presentation, uh, what are the testing features which we have in Natrax? We have now almost all the uh, dummies, instruments, uh, as well as stuff which we can use for testing ADAS vehicles. And with 50 kilometers of test tracks and one of the largest, uh, say, proving ground with uh, uh, 300 meters of dynamic track, 11 kilometers of, uh, uh, say, high-speed test track, Nitrax can easily become the most, uh, uh, you know, preferred place to do the real life ADAS testing. And we want to uh, collaborate with industry to develop it further because uh, we can't uh, develop things on our own. And uh, this is my, just a slide before my final slide. What are the our future plans? 
So one future plan is how do we collect Indian real load da uh, real data? So I know a lot of companies are doing their own testing and creating their own database. But as a test agency, national test agency, we also it is important for us to have massive data collection done, and that is where I. Uh, you know, we have drawn our plans that we would like to do it in partnership with uh, academia as well as industry to generate a huge database for us, which g gives us a real uh, environment for uh, testing of ADAS vehicles and not uh, something which is tested in isolation and not available publicly. Second is how in future the calibration of uh, sensors, lid LIDAR, radar happens on a routine basis. Because once the product is uh, calibrated and launched in the market, it does not mean that it will be uh, tested and verified and certified forever. Suppose a vehicle meets an accident and it goes through uh, some sort of a workshop and then the things get fitted again, it again needs to be recalibrated because the sensors, it is not like old days where you, you know, you just replace a uh, part and then, you know, you, you are ready to uh, use the vehicle again on road. It again has to uh, t uh, verify its roadworthiness. This is not a regulation, but at least this is something which we foresee should happen. Otherwise, we will be allowing vehicles uh, and uh, the sensors inbuilt into it on to run into Indian condition uh, without, uh, you know, getting calibrated and recertified again. Uh, and, yeah, just last uh, one minute I will take. And then my final thing is on the vehicle simulator. This is because the whole world is moving towards software-enabled vehicle. And this is very important for us to have a virtual development hub taking place at Natrax. And we can become the hub for that by offering uh, vehicle simulator where all the players can come together and do co-development without having the fear that data will be lost. So what is the final summary? Uh, ADAS regulatory framework is still evolving. At least in India, we can foresee it will be limited for next 10 years, level zero, level one. Acceleration of the regulation is the key. Lack of centralized database for Indian real life driving scenario is a, is a challenge, and especially with the varied traffic condition, and, and that is missing, and that is where we want to plug. And it is not just us. Uh, Agencies like ARI also have drawn plans, so we all of us have to pull our acts together and ensure that this happens. Then customized ADAS solution for India should be priority, uh, and with a lot of innovation and technical manpower and presence of global OEMs, I think this is a direction which we need to take. And finally, need for high level of collaboration between industry, academy, and government bodies in form of consortium is needed. So this is, we, we often talk in conferences like this, but it does not materialize once we leave the conferences. So I, I still want to say that, you know, maybe if we can uh, do a good handshake, we can make it work. Thank you very much.